I hate spiders. I think it all started with 1990s arachnophobia. Come on, we live in the country now. It's time to work through this irrational, paralyzing terror. A movie that terrified me to no end and I think ultimately scarred me for life. Just being in a room with a spider creeps me out. And to this day, the spider level in Russia Blood is the only game that's ever made me tear my headset off mid-game. My phobia is irrational, I know that. But it does explain why Kill It With Fire VR resonated with me so much. At least at first. Kill It With Fire VR puts you into a town with a serious spider problem. There's eight levels here, a family room, kitchen, office, you get the idea. Oh, and one bonus level for when you complete the game. Now, each stage consists of multiple rooms that unlock after killing a certain number of spiders or completing a certain number of goals. And goals can be anything from killing spiders to breaking dishes or putting bags of trash into dumpsters. Now, I'd call myself a completionist even when I'm reviewing games, which means I like to check every box and explore every corner before moving on to the next stage. And in Kill It With Fire VR, I think that was to my detriment, because a lot of these goals become monotonous and only end up wasting the player's time. This one in the convenience store is a perfect example. You can only scan 10 items to get your total up to over $100. But there's only a few items in the store worth more than $10. So it's basically an exercise in trial and error. Now, I get it. If all you were doing here was killing spiders, then things would get pretty boring pretty fast. So I'm glad there's something else to do here. I just wish some of these objectives were a little bit more fun. Speaking of killing spiders, that's probably what you're here for, so let's get to it. Each location is totally infested, and by walking around, pulling items off shelves and portraits off walls, you'll expose them, causing them to run across the floor. Initially, you'll just have to grab whatever's around to smash them, resulting in a splatter of neon green goo. But eventually, you'll have a ton of weapons at your disposal. Molotovs, shotguns, SMGs, and my favorite, the Weed Whacker. There's 25 items to unlock, along with batteries to find that allows you to upgrade the arachnid radar in your right hand. There's generic spiders, some that fire webs at you, even some that explode. But the interesting thing here is that you can't die or even get injured. There's no health bar and no damage to incur, meaning that if you're not scared of spiders, there's no real threat here and makes the whole game kind of dull. And if you are scared of spiders, well, it means the first two or three levels will be nerve wracking. The ambient sound effect of spiders all around you. To the creepy violin signifying a spider is on the loose despite being made up of just a few polygons, it was honestly enough to paralyze me with fear. Or at least it was for a while. By the time I got to the third or fourth level, it all started becoming a bit rote, I guess. Spiders started feeling less threatening, exploring the environments and completing quests became a total bore, and all of this was accelerated by the pretty terrible telekinetic grab mechanic. You can highlight items using eye tracking, then grab them with grips or triggers, but for whatever reason, this just doesn't seem to work properly. Sometimes items go flying past you, go bonkers all over the room, and some items practically refuse to be picked up. Now, generally, this is a minor annoyance, but it becomes a major issue when you're trying to grab your next set of objectives and it ends up in a pile somewhere behind you. I mean, look at this place. Finding anything here would be a massive chore. And this frustration really ruined my immersion, making Kill It With Fire some of the best exposure therapy out there. I used to think spiders were terrifying, but after just a few short hours, they really became yawn-inducing. Kill It With Fire is a bit of a yawn graphically too. Now, I don't mind the low poly art style, but while some of the environments are charming, some just feel amateurish, and I'm a bit baffled why this isn't maxing out PSVR 2's resolution. On the bright side, everything can be picked up, thrown, broken, and lit on fire, making Kill It With Fire really interactive from start to finish. And the soundtrack really fits the mood too, changing from pretty chill to creepy crawly whenever appropriate. A recent trend in gaming is to make games accessible for everyone, even for people with fears of spiders, and amazingly that's available here too. There's multiple options here for arachnophobes wanting to play Kill It With Fire. Everything from removing the ambient noises to even changing the shape of spiders to some amorphous blob. Now, none of this makes any sense to me though. Most of the enjoyment I got from Kill It With Fire came from my fear, which turned this cartoony game into straight up horror. And without that, I kind of don't see the appeal. Kill It With Fire VR started off strong. I loved being paralyzed with fear, terrified to open drawers or touch anything. Plus, the random objectives were fun and gave me something else to do between killing spiders. 
but the fascination and the fear died off way too quickly, and the further I got into the game, the more frustrated I got with the controls and the boring objectives. It certainly wasn't a total waste though, and I'd love to see a sequel that expands on the formula.